Thank you for tuning in to Mr. Cliff's Toy Shop. On today's review, we take a look at the Storm Collectibles Golden Axe Tyrus Flare. Today, I'll be reviewing this figure in the following category. Accessories, articulation, design. Is this essential to your collection, functionality, and price? Once those scores are totaled, I'll give you my opinion if this figure is a pass or a purchase. So I've been looking forward to this one. It took me a while to actually get it, but let's get it open. So for accessories, on the surface, it doesn't seem like we have a lot, but there's a decent amount of things that comes with these figures. So here we have this fantastic looking flame effect. Really like the paint on this as well as the design. Now we've seen this before with the Battle Axer, but a great accessory is a great accessory. Now coming with two Tyrus Flare, we have an alternate head sculpt. This one, she has the grimacing face. Really like the paint applications, as if she's wearing makeup. There appears to be like some eyeshadow, some lipstick on. And you see faint details in the face. They could have exaggerated with that more. I would have liked to see some wrinkling on the nose, some wrinkling above the brow. You see some slight detail in the cheek right about there. And the hair is sculpted well. Now, I really would have liked if we would have gotten an alternate head that mimicked the one on the box. So coming to the hands, we get five pair of hands that are in total. Two on a figure which are fisted. Coming into the hands. It's picking up. And then we have this great looking blade. Really like the hilt part here. You could just see the dry brushing looks aged a bit. And then you have that gold detailing peeking up nearly halfway on the blade. Now, if you notice, I did not include the riding dragon. I decided that I'm not gonna count that as an accessory, but its own item. Now, what I would have liked to see here if I'm not mistaken, in the game, you can pick up weapons that are lying around. So I would have liked to see additional weapons, even though I know that this blade is signature to the character. I also would like to see some potions. It's about time. We're getting really deep into this line that someone comes with potions. So for overall accessories, I'm going to go ahead and give this figure a 9 out of 10. So for articulation, the head is unable to look up any it does look down, rotate, you get a good amount of pivot. The arm kicks up to the side that much. It does rotate a full 360. You do have an upper bicep cut, which I'm surprised at. You have, is that a single, double? Elbow bending in that much. The wrists are on a ball peg, so you get, the, you get them to go in any direction that you need them to. You also have a fully working butterfly joint, collapsing forward that much, backwards that much up as well as down so with the torso up top you have a floating at the bottom you have a singular piece so using that floating she's able to crunch forward really a good amount does leave that gap backwards barely any great amount of rotation as well as excellent pivot now coming to the bottom piece you have a dumbbell at the bottom of that waist and look at that Great amount of rotation, pivot, full crunch forward, full crunch backwards. Very happy with that. Coming down to the legs, the legs kick forward that much, backwards that much. Good amount of rotation. You have, oh, rotation at the boot. I'm surprised at that. The knees are double jointed going way up. The feet are able to go down that much forward that much toe articulation it's on an angle but there you go with the rocker and if i haven't mentioned the legs go all the way out to the side this is how you do articulation especially when scope is important and you don't want to break up that ab region the articulation on this figure really couldn't have been engineered any better so for overall articulation, I'll be giving this figure a nine out of 10. So for design, this may cause some complication as there were alternating looks for Tyrus Flair. 
let's go ahead and start with the on the box image or the cover of the game image to where Tyra's hair was certainly wider in volume as most women wore their hair in the 80s. There's also her varying looks and the promotional art to the game itself. And then there's her in-game look, which this figure is more geared around, but not exactly. Storm Collectible had a difficult job of taking a 16-bit character and making her into an action figure. So let's go ahead and bring Tyrus closer to further examine her. So just taking a look at this head portrait, Storm Collectibles really did a good job. Just looking at her cheeks, it's almost as if she's wearing blush. The red lips, but not a cherry red, definitely more deeper. Looking at the eyes, you see the black lining as if she's wearing mascara. Just the face are, is painted uh, exceptionally and the eyes look very good, very happy with that. So looking at the bra, or swimsuit, whatever we're gonna call it. It is sculpted, so these lines uh, aren't just painted on. And for them to be so thin, the lines are actually painted clean. This then leads to this white bra. You have some small imperfections with the paint, but nothing that I would really point out. Turning her to the side, the white continues on the arm as it did into the game. Looking at the pelvis region, you can see that the bikini has the same color. The line continues to the back and coming down on the figure you see those iconic red boots so now let's just talk about the proportions i really like these arms i felt for years one of the reasons that we weren't getting female characters is storm collectibles really didn't figure out the look of the anatomy when it came to female characters specifically the arms and i think they really did a good job with these arms you could see small separation here really like how that's flushed and this ball, it doesn't bother me. I think it actually looks pretty good, all things considered. Looking at the flesh tone, there's definitely some shadowing. It's certainly more prominent in the middle of the chest region. Bringing closer, I just love this abdominal look. You can see the sculpted abs. You can see how the waist sort of inclined in and then protrudes out. I really like that. Coming down here, the hips come to the outside. Here they're a bit flat, would have liked them to have been more rounded, but that's fine. You still have definition here on the legs, coming up to the buttocks, which protrudes out just a little bit. And turning the figure to the back, the muscles and definition continues on the arms as well as in the back area, and all this is also shaded as well. Now one thing that I can say looking at this figure from a bit of a distance it does appear that she has the long leg syndrome and i think mainly this is because the figure is mostly nude the one thing that i would have really liked to see here is that on the box head sculpt really wish we would have gotten that now with all things considered i think storm collectibles did an amazing job piecing together the different images that they have and creating this figure so for overall design i'm going to give tyrus a nine out of ten so has Tyrus Flair sent you to your collection? Well, let's go ahead and look into the history of the character. Tyrus Flair was a princess of the Firewood Kingdom. On her 17th birthday, the kingdom was invaded by Death Adder. She managed to escape capture by hiding in a hidden chamber inside of the castle. After the battle ended, she emerged, realizing that Death Adder killed all within the kingdom. Tyrus Flair then sought to become stronger and was able to train with Amazon warriors in swordsmanship and fire magic. She joins with Battle Axer and Gilius Thunderbird, and the story proceeds from there. It's also worth mentioning that Tyrus Flair was the first female character in the fighting game. Now, as far as toy options, there are none, not even Funko Pops. So if you're looking for Golden Axe figures, if you have been looking for Golden Axe figures since 1980, here you are. Tyrus Flair was one of the three prominent characters in the game. And it's shocking to think that we don't have a single Golden Axe figure other than Storm Collectibles in toy form, toy form. So as far as being essential to your collection, I'm going to give this character a 10 out of 10. So for functionality, we might as well start here. There is some assembly required. There is a ball peg here, which attaches right here. 
I'm thinking I may have to go on camera to get this situated. I may have to even heat this up. Okay, not the easiest to install. What I would tell you, it is best to have it facing this way when pushing it on. All right, where to start with this? So if you're wondering why this wasn't in the articulation section, and I assure you I considered putting it there, I'm not a place yet where I can score animal or beast articulation. So just showing its points in the functionality department made more sense to me. So just starting with the head of this dragon. Yeah, the jaw itself is articulated. I have some experience with this as it's the same dragon that comes with battle axe or just a different color. So it doesn't open that wide, but you get some movement and it's not as tight as I would like it to be. So the head itself is able to look down. It's able to look up, not that far as it just popped off that far. It does, can you see that? It does pivot and you get some great motion. The neck itself is also able to move. The neck is able to move. Oh, pop that off. All right. All right, let's try that again. The neck is able to go back only a little forward, not that much. It is able to rotate a full 360 and you get some movement in this circular motion. Coming to the arms, they're able to do a full 360. You do have a bend at the elbow, allowing the arm to go down that much, up a pretty good amount. The hand or claws are on a ball peg, so you get all the rotation you need out of that. The arm is able to come out. Oh, way more than I expected. More, 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 more. Holy smokes. Oh, wow, that is a lot. I wasn't expecting that. And coming down to the legs, they're also able to come out from the side some. They do rotate a full 360. You have a bend at the knee going up that much. Doesn't come down at all. The foot is able to rotate. You do have toe articulation. And you have no rocker. No rocker. Doesn't appear to be any. And the tail does move. It rotates. And there you have it. Now, looking at the saddle, it is very soft. I believe this to be a plastic, not a rubber. And you have the part here of the saddles, which eh, may be made out of the same material. And with this dragon, it can absolutely stand on its hind legs. You can also use the tail to give it some added balance. But here, the tail is actually not touching, despite what it might look like. So let's see if she can mount this. If you saw my video with Chicken Leg uh, and Gilead's Thunder, he was unable to sit on the animal he came with. Hopefully this isn't the case here. So I'm gonna prop the legs apart. I actually wanna make this look better, so I'm gonna go off camera to do this. So she was able to mount it pretty easily and I think she sits up there just fine. Now, looking at the hands, none of the hands are really form-fitting for this harness. With the grip hands or weapon-holding hands, I suppose you can force it through them. They are soft enough to make it work. Now, with this dragon, it is a bit top-heavy, so you do have to find the right place to put it. And with the dragon like that, go ahead and arch him back, put in the flame effect. And there you go. You know, if I push him forward anymore, everything is just going to topple over. But this is pretty much it. Execution. Done well. So for a quick size comparison, let's go ahead and look at these two beasts. Head to head. Side to side. Turn them to the rear. And I'll say that about covers all angles. So the tail is much longer on chicken leg, but the other proportions are larger, larger on the dragon. All right, now let's get these out of the way. 
Okay, so I just realized that this figure could do something that I was unaware of. As I was moving it, part of the hair started to move off, so I'm assuming that the hair is swappable. We'll figure that We'll figure that part out. As you can see, she clearly passes the stand test. Now there aren't a lot of accessories, so this part with functionality should be relatively quick. Let me go ahead and swap out the hands. So I'm gonna remove the hands. Preferred method is the peg to be on the hands themselves. Let's prop that in. Let's go ahead and get the only weapon that she comes with. The hands are very soft, so it should be no issue holding it. And she holds it secure. So before getting to this head, let's go ahead and take a look at the rest of the body. So unfortunately, due to the long hair, it does restrict movement with the head. Aside from that, looking at the rest of the body, let's go ahead and focus on the butterfly joint. Nowadays, you don't see a lot of figures with true butterfly joints, so I'm happy that we receive, we get this hair. And it's actually truly functional. You really get a decent amount of movement with that. Also, really like the soft silicone, if that's what it is, body that Storm Collectible uses. Usually, the silicone portion is up top, and here it is very soft. That's great because it allows you to get more flex when bending on a harder piece. So that's fantastic. You can see that the arms really collapse in, like you can really get that going. And I love the dumbbell at the waist. Companies need to do this like Super 7 who barely gives you any articulation. Why don't we have that? Also looking at the pelvis, this is also a very soft area which allows to, the legs to lift without rubbing or scratching. This body is just really engineered well and having the cut underneath the boots just allows for added mobility. Unlike the Hell Witch figure who legs didn't turn, you see you get movement here. So when you turn in and decide to turn a leg, it doesn't look crazy. All right, now I wanna go ahead and see what's going on with this hair, right? So you definitely can take that portion off. Let me look at the other head as I haven't swapped that one yet. All right, so I'm actually gonna just pull this head off first. Let's see what the other head looks like first on the figure. Okay, there we are. The other head is on. Now let's start playing around with hair pieces. Let's see how this one works. I really don't see the difference there. Let's take this off. Hopefully I don't mix them up. Let's put the original one back on. And let's try. Okay, so that's one look. And this. Come on, get in there. And that's the other look. And I forgot which goes where. So for functionality, the only complaint that I can muster is if she would have come with an alternate head or some windswept hair, this will allow the head to look up more. Aside from that, it's pretty much perfect. So for functionality, I'm giving this figure and this figure a 9 out of 10. So for pricing, I got this one at a steal, however... Regularly pricing is $135. Add in taxes, add in shipping. You're looking at a price point of roughly $155. So now is this figure worth the price of admission? Well, let's see what it comes with. In terms of accessories, you receive an alternate head soap. We receive five pair hands in total and at least her slashing saw it. But the real drawer, if you're counting it as an accessory, would be the dragon. And if you break those two down, you're looking at roughly $70 each, $75 each. And to me, that is great value. So for pricing, I'm going to give this set a 10 out of 10. That should give this set an overall cliff score of. So now is this two pack a pass or a purchase? You're receiving the first female character to appear in a fighting game. And you're getting the toy form of that character the first time that it's being made. Something about that feels pretty historical. In addition to all of that history, 
you're getting a fantastic creature. There aren't enough creatures in this particular scale. And in addition to that, you're getting a fantastic action figure. This is certainly one of the best for the year. This is an absolute purchase. Just looking at these two figures side by side, you see the difference in quality with the figures. This Storm Collectible is a superior product and that's nothing against this figure, which I absolutely like. Here's a Mythic Legions for anyone who wants to combine lines. Here's a Marvel Legends for anyone who's interested in seeing that scale. Here she is next to a combatant figure. Here she is next to a deluxe McFarlane figure. Here she is next to Death Adder. Look at the size difference there. I said that I have to get the alternate version, the blackened version. Haven't did so yet. That is definitely on my list. This is a great figure. And last but not least, Gilius Thunderbird. I don't have Battle Axer on me. I do have the figure. Wasn't able to grab it in time for this review. Though with Storm Collectibles continuing with this line, I will have time to do size comparisons at another point. I want to thank you for tuning into Mr. Clips Toy Shop. Hope to see you during the next episode.